All right, good evening, everybody. How's it going? We've got a little bit of Seahawks news. I mean, not really, but let's go ahead and put a bow on this. Uh, first of all, in a couple of hours, I will be live on Twitch playing It Takes Two with my friend. So if you want to see that, head on over there, hit the follow button, and we will be playing some It Takes Two, trying to get through a good portion of the game tonight. Yes, that is probably bigger news than what this video is actually about, unfortunately. But, hey, at the very least, it's over, right? So, the Arizona Cardinals have poached a free agent from the Seattle Seahawks. They are signing de defensive end slash defensive tackle slash really none of those things because he can't really do any of it, LJ Collier. A one-year deal that I can only assume is veteran minimum. And, yeah, that is the end of the LJ Collier era in Seattle. So... <laughs> Um, obviously that ends one of the most obnoxious, I mean, the Seahawks definitely made a lot of draft mistakes from that 2014 to 2021 era, I would say, 20, maybe you could say 2013 to 2021. LJ Collier was probably the most annoying of all the mistakes because nobody wanted him, nobody except apparently Pete Carroll, because it did seem like a Pete Carroll pick viewed L.J. Collier as being anything other than a late second to third round pick. And then, after acquiring him via the draft, we basically never really played him. We played him a little bit in year two. He did some positive things that year. And then, it, w it, was, it was the strangest thing, right? We kept him around, but then we didn't play him. So, it was just a very frustrating era, right? Because nobody wanted this guy, except for Pete Carroll, apparently. There wasn't a single Seahawks fan that was like, oh yeah, we got LJ Collier, this guy's awesome, this guy's worth a first round pick. If anything, I was one of the guys who was more positive about him back when we took him, and even I said like, yeah, this is a reach. Admittedly, I did think he was at least going to be an okay player in the NFL, he was not. But, um, yeah, relieved this year is over. So, so ends the LJ Collier time in Seattle, one of the... I mean, there, there have been worst first-round picks, right? There are first-round picks that wash out of the league immediately. There are first-round picks that get injured and never play. There are first-round picks that get cut after, like, a year and a half. Like, there's some really, really bad first-round picks out there. LJ Collier is not the worst. But all in all, it was probably the most frustrating, right? Because you're talking about a guy who never had any big upside. He never had any potential to become, like, a star in this league. Everybody... Even the people who maybe were a little more positive about him were like, okay, he can be a good starter in this league. He can be somebody who competently takes up space as a 5-tech or maybe a 3-tech or something like that. We, we, that we, don't, we don't even really know what his role is supposed to be. We tried him in multiple different places and none of it really worked. And um, yeah, other than that 2020 season where he did actually contribute a little bit, it was just a really, really empty career. And, yeah, again, like, you go down to his snap count, you can see he actually played fewer snaps in 2022 than he did as a rookie. And in his rookie year, he was actually hurt. I don't think he got hurt in 2022. No, he just was inactive in more than half of the games. And yet we kept him around for season after season after season. I don't know. I don't get it either. But he's off to Arizona. Good luck over there, my man. <laughs> um... I can't say I'm rooting for you for many different reasons, but uh, I don't think me rooting for you or not is going to make any real difference. All right, LJ Collier, off to Arizona.